Tonight, for the first time in a Hannity and Combs exclusive interview, Sean spoke with Senator Thompson and his wife, Jerry Thompson. Senator Thompson, good to see you again. Good to see you, Sean. And Jerry, Thank good you. to see you. Thank you. All good right, now we, we have Hayden Victoria. Hi, Hayden. Hi. How are you? And how old are you, Hayden? Four. And this is Samuel uh, Howard. Hey, Howard. Samuel uh -huh. Howard Thompson. Hey. <laughs> Jerry, we've known each other a long time, yes, and um, as the media has pointed out, let me read from the Associated Press about you. Rarely seen and never heard. Well, obviously that's not going to happen tonight. Uh, former political consultant who said to wield considerable influence behind the scenes of her husband's campaign. <laughs> I, I, if I had time to do that, it would be a different story, but uh, two kids under four, I think most people in America understand what kind of time and effort that takes. You, you guys spend a lot of time on the road together, you all? Much as we can, much yes. as we can. Uh, 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 her priorities, of course, our priorities are, are, are the kids, and we have to work it around their uh, requirements and so forth. But it, it sure it sure makes it different for, for me when they're around. You'd like to, and you, part of it, I noticed you've been traveling around. It's not the red pickup truck, but you guys have had a bus a little bit on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit, and it's filled up with non-campaign stuff, too, I tell you. But, Stickers, uh, Barbie dolls, <laughs> <laughs> well, lots may, of videos, lots uh, of videos. You know one thing I read, which I don't know if you guys have heard or thought about here, that, Jerry, if, if Senator Thompson is elected president, that would make you the youngest first lady since Jacqueline Kennedy. I, I have one question. Do I get the clothes? <laughs> <laughs> you mean, do they pass down the, from one first wife to another, first lady to another? Oh, this is, well, that stuff isn't, isn't what you think about now. We've, we've been really blessed this trip because I'm, I'm from the Midwest. I was born in Nebraska. Papa. And I spent my summers in, in Lake Okoboji here in Iowa, and my mother got to come visit us. I grew up outside of Chicago. My aunt uh, lives in Omaha. She's been able to come spend time with us. So this is really special for us, and it ends up being a blessing to be able to have all the family come join us. But you know something? It's, it's tough when anybody's running for any campaign or any office. When you get to the level of running for the presidency, that's the most scrutiny any candidate is going to get running for any office. Obviously, you guys had to think long and hard about this decision. Bring us, bring us into that decision-making process. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, uh, as, as I like to say, this ain't my first rodeo. and. Uh, uh, Jerry knows what it's all about, too. Uh, I run for the Senate, and that's one level. I've been around presidential campaigns, and, and it's uh, the, the kind of things you're talking about has escalated over the years. There's more outlets, you know, to perpetrate that sort of thing than there used to be also. Mm -hmm. And so you have to take that into consideration. But the question is, it, it's only aggravation uh, when you get right down to it. When you, when you put that up against uh, the future of your country, and uh, its security and its prosperity and what kind of a world these kids are going to grow up in and your grandchildren it's it's pretty small potatoes uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's it's never been uh, a tough question as far as we're concerned uh, it took a little while for us to decide that this was uh, uh, the thing to do, the right time to do it and so forth, and making sure we were being fair with the children and all. But in terms of the outside aggravation, uh, it just makes us more determined. Yeah. Jerry, you've been around politics uh, a lot. You worked at the Republican National Committee uh, for the Senate uh, Republican Conference for mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. uh, years ago, you even had an occasional appearance on Hannity and Combs. Uh, so you, you know a lot about the political world. What was the decision like for you when, when you all were thinking about running? <laughs> I knew, I knew when we started talking about it that the most important thing that I could do is support Fred and his decision. And no one knows him better than I do. And no one knows that he will secure our prosperity and our security better than anyone I know. And that's, that, that is more important to me and to us because of our kids and because of his grandkids. And that's what motivates me. And that's why I'm here. And that you believe in him and that this was... I believe in him and I believe in our country. Do you want to have a role in the campaign? This is the question that is asked any candidate's wife. The, ro the role that I have probably would be no different than any other uh, spouse. And that's that you're the, you're the most important probably surrogate for, you know, that husband or, or wife. Right. I, I don't think that's any different for me than anybody else. Right. One, one, I noticed you got, you guys, it shouldn't surprise you, got hit a little bit in Newsweek. Um, in an article, and, and, and one of the things they said here, and, and I think it's important maybe sometimes 
when you have an opportunity to set the record straight. And because in both instances, in quotes I'm going to throw at you here, they were, quote, unnamed sources. One supposedly from within your campaign, uh, quote, a GOP operative who was an unofficial campaign manager and top advisor. <laughs> <laughs> quote, We've got about 100 of those, don't we? People wonder if she's more into this than he is, said a Thompson advisor who has not to be uh, name talking about private matters and the other quote in the same article this time around some close to him question whether moving into the White House is truly Thompson's life ambition or more the dream of his wife Cherry well think about it for a minute you know to, to people say uh, people who say that this has not been my lifetime ambition I plead guilty it hasn't been that's absolutely true circumstances change times change your country faces different uh, challenges and you change as an individual uh, when I left the rep before I left the Senate uh, Jerry and I got married uh, not too long after that we discovered that uh, that Hayden was on the way and you look at things differently you ask yourself um, uh, what kind of, of, of country and what kind of world are, are you going to leave uh, behind our, our generation what are we doing to or for uh, the next generation for their welfare and how many people have an opportunity to do anything about it and I was fortunate enough to, to uh, have a, a wife who inspires me who by, she says she knows me better than anybody and, I, and she does and to have her to have the kind of faith in me uh, that she has uh, it, it does inspire me but to move from her life and the things we enjoy and television show or whatnot, making speeches around the country. You know, plane tickets are usually for two. And uh, one of these days before long, you know, you know she'll, she could do that too uh, with me. And uh, that, that's not, I don't think that's something that she relishes moving out of into this kind of a process and um, be open to anything anybody wants to anonymously say about you. But again, uh, it's not that much of a priority, and it's a testament to her strength, really, uh, to say, uh, you know, sure it hurts sometimes when you know it's so false and so unfair, but so what? You know, it doesn't compare to uh, what we're doing here. Right. I was interested to find out. I didn't know you guys had met July 4th. <laughs> 1996 in, in Nashville. Yes, sir. How did you, how did you meet? We met at the Kroger, which is the grocery store chain. You got shopping center to see yourself at the Kroger. So you I sure was. Kroger. I was on my way to my uh, to my mother's house, actually. And uh, Jerry claims to remember what I had in my basket. I'm not sure I do, but uh, uh, beanie weenies. And right? a half of a pre-made sandwich. Have you either one of you <laughs> have, have you both ever had a moment to stop and think what happens if you win? Or have you have you allowed yourself to think about what that life would be like? That would be just a little over a year from now. Mm -hmm. Jerry, you want to go first? I wonder if I could get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought about being, you might be first lady? I mean, he's second in the polls, very strong numbers. His numbers have tripled since April. He's a, a strong candidate. It, it's somewhat daunting uh, if you look at it that way. But I have to look at it, it that it won't, my priorities won't change it, when he wins. It would be still, I'm still his wife and I'm still the mother of then, you know, one year, one and a half and, and four and a half year old children that, that require a lot of attention and a lot of guidance. And if I could be that role model that's doing the best that I can in those two roles, then that's, that wouldn't be any different than who I am right now mm -hmm. or what I'm doing right now. If you're, if you're first lady. Your job would be to take care of the, the kids. Yes. That would be your main focus, it would. whether it's in the White House or in Nashville. It absolutely would. Yeah. Well, if, if, and I'm sure Jerry feels the same. If, if I didn't feel like I could be a good father and a good president at the same time, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't run for president. Um, but uh, I think that, uh, I think you can make it, you can make it work. There's, uh, there's ways to do things, uh, you know, when you, uh, when you uh, hold that office and places that you can go and spend time together with, uh, with your family and your children and uh, uh, work part of the time and, and, and stay with them part of the time on vacations and things of that nature. 
a lot of fathers have to travel a lot. I mean, I was traveling a lot before this came about. A lot of fathers have to spend a lot of time away from home. We'll always be under the same roof, you know, if I have my way about it. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, I've thought a lot about it. But I've also thought about, you know, I want, <coughs> I want them to know uh, that, uh, that their uh, daddy always tried to, to do what was right. Yeah. And, uh, and that, uh, you know, this, this is the right thing to do uh, for our country. I think they'll feel the same way that I do when, when, and Jerry does when they grow up about, you know, the, their, their, their country and the importance of doing what you ought to do when you ought to do it. Let me, let me ask you this. Um, in terms of maybe a role that you might take on, as you, you pointed out, your children are going to be your first priority. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't run for president if you couldn't be a good father mm -hmm. at the same time. Uh, we have, in the case of both uh, Barack Obama's wife, Michelle, and mm -hmm. John Edwards' wife, Elizabeth, both have been very active out there and even aggressively going after Hillary Clinton. Uh, Mrs. Obama said, my view is that if you can't run your own house, you certainly can't run the White House. Elizabeth Edwards, talking about Hillary Clinton, you know, lest there be any doubt. Elizabeth Edwards said Hillary Clinton didn't just fail to get universal health care as first lady, and then went on to further. Would that be a role you'd want to take on at all? In, in the campaign. You mean in attacking Hillary or, or in, 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 the, in a stronger In the primary role? campaign or in the general campaign? I think Fred is such an eloquent spokesman, I'd leave it to him. Mm -hmm. on, 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 those, on those kind of things, I, I think that... Hey, you're a better politician than I am. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> it, that, that's not, you know, ironically, that's not my style. Mm -hmm. That being said, <laughs> that being said... I am hot about that, right? <laughs> you are. The, the one thing that I might express if I have the opportunity, and since mm -hmm. you're allowing me to do that, mm -hmm. is that it, it does seem surprising to me that there isn't more coverage of, of women's rights in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Iran. And why these questions, you know, we keep having these, you know, these stories about the role of the, you know, of the, of the spouse this time around. Why aren't we talking about the roles of these spouses all over the world that are being stoned and being hung for looking the wrong way or not wearing the burqa, you know, properly? Uh, that is something to me that, that I can't quite square. It's, it's, it's very it's very difficult for me to try to uh, explain to my daughter who's four, you know, why why certain women are treated differently, you know, here and you know versus there. And I think that's the sort of thing that needs to be uh, discussed more openly than some yeah. of this other trivial. We should we stuff. showed we showed a video on Hannity and Combs the other night in Iran of a woman being stoned to death. You know, that was. You know, we looked at, we had in Iraq, rape rooms we discovered, mm -hmm. torture chambers that were there. Uh, women in Afghanistan were not able to pursue an education, were not able to go out to work. Now they are able. I, I would agree with you. I think those issues are not focused on a lot. Why but do you for, think that is? But for our brave troop, you know, troops that were there, there would be Uday and Kuse still there. And those are the things that, you know, we need to remind ourselves of. Yeah. Uh, when we have these conversations, I think that those sorts of things are very important. Just prior to coming on the air, your campaign released a statement from you um, regarding the comments and the goings on in Washington right now to, quote, condemn Rush Limbaugh on the Senate yeah. floor. Yeah. You said congressional Democrats are trying to divert attention from insulting our military leader in Iraq. Uh, and pandering to the loony left by attacking Rush Limbaugh. He is one of the strongest supporters of our troops, yet Democrats claim he's not being strong enough. I wonder who General Petraeus and his troops think is most supportive. Yeah. Well, somebody asked me what I thought about that, and that's what I think about it. Uh, uh, they're trying to divert attention from the embarrassment of having to align themselves with an outfit like MoveOn.org and take their support and direction in many cases because they raise so much money for the Democrats and uh, Move On, you know, uh, practically calls Petraeus a traitor and uh, most of them don't vote to condemn him for that and yet they'll take something that that uh, somebody like uh, Limbaugh says, which is, uh, was, was totally a distortion of what he was talking about, clearly, and uh, to try to divert attention away from it, and go to the Senate floor and take the time of the United States Senate uh, to personally insult him. And, um, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why Congress uh, has an 11% approval rating. 
you know, here we are um, trying to determine what the United States' role in the world is going to be uh, coming into um, uh, the, the age of uh, weapons of mass destruction and radicalism around the world. We're trying to, to keep our country from uh, going down the road uh, to, to economic uh, chaos with the kind of locked-in spending program that we've got that inevitably uh, we have to do something about. This is what they take time on the United States Senate floor uh, to talk about. And I just thought it was time that uh, uh, I said my piece on that little part. Has the campaign been everything you expected? Is it harder? Is it easier? Um, the ABC poll that came out today has you a solid second, tripled your numbers, as I said, since April, um, and holding. Uh, you're about to enter the debate process mm -hmm. in fairly short order. Are you happy where you are, both of you, right now? Is it everything you thought? Is it more than you expected? Well, it's about it's about what I expected. You know, I was I've been running strong for some time now. I think people think that they have um, that they know me, that they know where I'm coming from, that they know that I'm doing this for the right reasons, that I have no reason or motivation to speak anything but what I think is the truth. Uh, some of it is uh, is the tough truth, the fact that we're in a global conflict, of which Iran and Iraq are only a part of, and uh, the global conflict is going to take a lot of effort and unity and money. Uh, the fact that uh, we're spending the money of future generations right now, and uh, we got to do something about that. Uh, those are the things that motivate and drive me, and I think people see that. And. Uh, uh, some of it's from maybe the TV show and, and uh, other things, but I've been around since Watergate in one fashion or another, and I like to think the people are right, that they do perceive me uh, the way they do. All right, let me ask this. One controversy. I've read a lot, Senator, about your, your faith and your background. Uh, you grew up uh, and went to a church that was fairly strict. There was no dancing, no music playing, um, et cetera. And the last time we spoke, you, you said your faith is one of the most important things to you in your life. And yet, uh, I've got one headline, quote, evangelicals are turning on Thompson, and James Dobson said he wouldn't support Tom Thompson. And having had that conversation with you and knowing a little bit about your background, I was a little bit surprised about that. Yeah. What, well, what? don't read too much into uh, the Dobson thing. Frankly, that's the only one I've seen that uh, is, uh, is, is like that. The one that led yeah. the AP story that had this leaked memo? The, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's, that's the one. That's the, yeah. Dobson, that's the Dobson memo. A gentleman who uh, has never met me, has never talked to me. I've never talked to him on the phone. I did have one of his aides call me up and kind of apologize the first time he attacked me and said I wasn't a Christian. Um, but I haven't spoken out publicly and, and you know chastised him for that. I'm not not going to. I I, uh, I don't know the gentleman. Uh, I do know that I have uh, um, a lot of people who are of strong faith and uh, who, who are involved in the same organizations that he is in that I've met with. Jerry and I both have met with. And I'd like to think that we have some strong friendships and support there. And we talked about things in some detail, some of which uh, I'm glad to talk about, many things, um, and, and answer to uh, specific questions, uh, some of which are very personal to me. And um, I've never worn any of that on my shoulder. Um, I. Uh, uh, have my own relationship to the good Lord and as I like to say in my heart of hearts I know I'm straight with him and I'm uh, on good terms with him and I'm on good terms with those who love me and those who I love mm -hmm. and the rest of it you know we'll just have to work around that. Would you, would you want to have a conversation with Dr. Dobson? Do you think that might help? I, I have no idea. I don't particularly care to have a conversation with him. Uh, if uh, if he wants to call up and apologize again, uh, you know it's uh, it, it's okay with me. But I, I'm 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 not going to dance to anybody's tune. Senator Thompson, Ms. Thompson, Jerry, thank you for being with us today. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks.